Hi guys. Well, <laughs> it has been a fucking mixed bag today here in the end times. Good fucking God. What it is, it has turned into just a nasty, ugly, dreary. It is Wednesday, May 24th, uh, the eve of our grand opening tomorrow. I have been going back and forth all day with this guy about renting the one of the tiny houses tomorrow. So this is just one, one, one of my many plans. So anyway, it has been a good day because uh, as you might have seen my other video, I can now drive this gas sucking truck about three fourths of the way up the hill to <laughs> the piney woods. And uh, so you might remember in addition to that, to the main driveway. So I spent $650 for these guys to take another machine and cut a path for my gator, you know, my my little gator who has saved my ass. I continually thank Brother Basil for the gift of that fine gator. So, uh, <laughs> I have been waiting. Basil, when did you, what is it? Uh, how many months have I been waiting to be able to drive the gator from my house, you know, to the, so I, so I can reach all of my tiny houses with that gator. I don't know whether I'll ever be able to drive the gas sucking truck, but as long as I uh, have the gator, you know, I can move materials up there. I can welcome my Airbnb guest and give them a ride up the hill with all of their stuff so they don't have to drag all of their shit up the hill and all of this. So uh, I finally, uh, at 6 o'clock the night before our grand opening, I take the gator on its, uh, on its maiden voyage up the $650 gator trail thing performs beautifully i go flying up there i'm yee-hawing everything is fine i load up that heavy ass generator up there at the tiny house and sitting there telling rob this is the last fucking time that we're ever carrying this thing back and forth back and forth up and down this goddamn hill said i'm putting this motherfucker on the gator so uh before I loaded the generator, I decided to use the gator for all of this construction cleanup around the tiny house. You know, loading up uh, old boards and construction debris and shit uh, ready for our first guest tomorrow. I said, well, as long as I got the fucking gator here, so I'm driving all around this construction site and uh, cleaning up all of that uh, construction debris because I'm having my big dump run tomorrow. So I get all of that done and I lug that motherfucking generator back out to the gator, you know, outside of the goddamn tiny house that I can finally drive to. Uh, you know, telling my Airbnb guests, yeah, uh, that I'll be able to deliver all of your stuff uh, in the gator that you don't have to be, you know. And uh, so I get in the gator, and I load the goddamn generator and that construction debris shit in the back of the gator, put it in forward and start heading forward, and, the, and it's driving like shit. And I'm going, what in the fuck is going on? Well, you can take a wild guess what was going on. I got a goddamn flat tire I'm sure I hit a fucking nail or a screw or some goddamn sharp object up there in the middle of that construction zone. So now I have no gator. I've got, let's see, how many different sets of people so far are lined up between now and Monday? One, two, three, four, five. I got seven sets of people 
coming in, uh, seven sets of people, and I have told all of them that uh, I will be carrying all their shit up the hill and that gator, and now I'm sitting here with a fucking flat tire. Something else to goddamn deal with, but uh, anywho's this two shot pass. So here is let let me let let's figure out how my day went today. So I so I wake up this morning about six fifteen this goddamn morning and go on my computer and everything is looking fine. And so at eight o'clock. I make two Skype calls. I call the damn lumber yard where I'm to the sawmill, and other so I make two Skype calls on my computer. Everything is fine with the Skype on the computer. Uh, no problems. Uh, I picked up a couple of other messages. I sent out a couple of texts. I had two personal conversations. This was at 8 o'clock this morning uh, on Skype. And then I go on and find that Airbnb, that I have a reservation on my Airbnb. So then whenever I get an Airbnb reservation, I need to go over to HipCamp and block the fucking date. I've been doing this for two years. You know, whenever one makes a reservation, I go over to the other site and block the dates. I just did this shit a week ago. I go on there and, and I try to block the dates no matter what the fuck I do. I, I block the date. That's no problem. I go in there and, and I block out the date, but I notice that all I'm blocking is a campsite. And it says, uh, it, it, and so I had to block one of the tiny houses. And so I went to figure out how the fuck do I move it from the campsites to one of the tiny houses. There was no fucking way. So I get on there to support. When you go into hip camp, they actually have a support llama. I get on there. And the fuck, and I'm chatting with a llama. And the fucking llama is telling me how to do this. And I say, no shit, you fucking llama. And, uh, you know, the llama tells me to go on the edit and to pick out the date and to block the date. And then I do all of that. And then the next step is to select which one of your listings that you want to block. I do this all the time. There is no fucking way on that screen. And I saw, you know, I went off and back, off and back. There is no fucking way uh, to move it out of the campsite. So I, and so I said, I need uh, to talk to a real fucking human being at hip camp support. I had had enough of the fucking llama. So, I, I decided to call Hip Camp Support, so I go over to my Skype. This is now 9.30 in the morning, so this is one hour after all of that Skyping I did. I go over on my computer. There is no Skype on my fucking... Well, what there is, there's a blank screen, a blank white screen that says Skype on it. Uh, I turned off the fucking computer, I, you know, I completely turned it off, I counted to 20, turned the motherfucking computer back on, and, uh, and no fucking Skype. If you try to, this just happened to me in Texas a few weeks ago, two and a half hours I spent on that fucking supported Skype trying to get my goddamn Skype back on my computer. I, I said, fuck this. I have a lot to do today. So I still have, so I have no Skype on my computer, which reminds me of that whole rant about uh, that fucking interview that that little eco-pissy over at Collapse Chronicles had last night. 
that fucking train wreck uh, trying to be interviewed in the year 2023 between Zoom and Skype. And I ended up having that interview for a few minutes of it anyway on Skype. The same fucking Skype I had that goddamn interview on. Anyway, so what else happens? So, that's right. So then it is time to shampoo the carpets and the tiny house. All right, it is finally, the day before our grand opening, you know, I wanted to save the carpet shampooing to the last thing. So I haven't been giving a running drama of what I have been going through with this fucking vacuum cleaner I have. There's this, you know, this $200 heavy duty vacuum cleaner that that fucking bitch tenant of mine from a couple of years ago, she left it behind. Best vacuum cleaner I've ever had. So anyway, uh, I guess the hose broke on it this winter. So uh, Rob and Donna got a $35 Walmart vacuum cleaner to replace this $200 nice vacuum cleaner. So I go on. The fucking hose that's broken costs the same as the goddamn Walmart vacuum cleaners. $35. I spend $35. I, I lose days and days. Uh, there's a whole nother rant that I could get on. I, I mean, this dude who's working for me, he's trying to get a fucking vacuum cleaner. So anyway, I order the fucking thing. Wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. The fucking hose finally gets here. But by that time, what we needed the vacuum cleaner for, we'd already used the other vacuum cleaner. Uh, you, you know, just tell the, tell the part for the good vacuum cleaner. Uh, so, the, so the part actually got here like five days ago. Five fucking days. This brand new hose from Amazon has been sitting in my living room, taunting me. And I said, well, I don't want to shampoo the fucking carpets until Wednesday the 24th. This was one of the main things I was going to do today. So after dealing with Skype and hip camp bullshit, I get up and I say, okay, put your mind to something else. I go get that motherfucking vacuum cleaner hose that's been sitting there. I, I put it on. It takes five minutes to, to install the new hose on the $200 vacuum cleaner. I put the new hose in. I uh, and, and I go in the tiny, you know, you're supposed to vacuum the rug and then you put the shampoo on and then you vacuum it a second time. I go in there, I turn on a whoosh, and, and I have my brand new hose and I start vacuuming the carpet and I notice that nothing is getting sucked into the $200 vacuum cleaner with the brand new hose. And I said, what in the fuck is going on? Get down there on my goddamn hands and knees. Well, the hose I replaced was like three feet long. You know, that long, crinkly extension hose at the bottom of the vacuum cleaner. There, there's like a fucking three-inch hose at the bottom of the vacuum cleaner which was completely destroyed. So the vacuum cleaner, absolutely fucking worthless that I have had out of commission since I got back three weeks ago, spent 35 motherfucking dollars on that hose, been waiting for this day for three weeks to, to have that motherfucking vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner, completely fucking worthless cause I did not buy the second hose, which I did not knew it no existed on the fucking vacuum cleaner. I went in that motherfucking house. I got that $35 Walmart vacuum cleaner. Thing worked absolutely perfectly. Perfectly. So I get the rug shampooed in the tiny house. What was the next thing? Uh, so that job is done. Oh, that's right. So then I decide to go 
uh, varnish uh, my beautiful plank that I'm, you know, that I've put all of this time, I spent $103 on the plank. Uh, I, I get this, a, a, a gallon of fucking varnish is $100 for a gallon of varnish, but unfortunately Rob already had some left around. Go out there, I scrub that motherfucking thing down. I get out the $100 a gallon varnish. Fucking cow running in front of me. Uh, I go in there and I put the varnish on that plank. It is absolutely beautiful, guys. I mean, absolutely beautiful. So I got this wet, sticky ass coat of varnish on that gorgeous plank up there in the upper tiny house. There is not one whisper of wind blowing. I finished that motherfucking thing. I'm sitting there admiring my job. This fucking tornado comes out of nowhere. Whoosh! And starts blowing all of this shit. Fucking pine needles, maple little seeds, the fucking plank, this gorgeous uh, $100 plank with, with, with a coat of varnish on it covered in, in, in all of this fucking bullshit and uh, it was about that time when uh, my planet eater came to announce that my road was ready and uh, the day actually improved other than trying to find the, this dude seeing if he wants to rent this tiny house tomorrow or not so racing along to get that ready, and uh, what are you going like? Who is that? That's a that, that that's an Amish. That is an Amish person in a gas-powered. Uh, you you tell him. You tell him, Sancho Panza, that you're fucking Amish. You, you should not be carrying that around in, in a gas-sucking uh, forklift. I carried one of those water tanks uh, myself. These, these fucking, you, you tell that Amish guy, you tell him, you say, you say Luca, I, I, I know that you're not a fucking Amish dude, you got more fucking fossil fuels uh, than fucking Dubai, alright, I am here for my last board, uh, we're making the, uh, we're making the handrails for the stairs in the upper tiny house, and uh, the last board, do you believe it? These guys are like, yeah, right. Uh, we've heard your, your, your last board comment enough times, dude. Shut the fuck up about your last board. Uh... These guys have saved my ass. These beautiful hemlock trees have not died in vain. They are now going to make a staircase to a tiny house. <laughs> and I am done with the uh, dead hemlock trees at the Amish sawmill. Get out there and enjoy your dead hemlock trees while you still can before every fucking hemlock tree in New York is dead. Oh man, there's my new Dulcinea. Oh God, what is she up to now? She's probably, I think, I think she's changing the oil on a tractor. <laughs> so I was talking to her 15 year old son today. I said, your mama is hell on that damn sawmill. I said, brother, I said, you need to, you're going to have to uh, learn how to make curtains. And this 15 year old boy, he, he goes, I assure you, I will never make a curtain in my life. And I said, well, your mama can run a sawmill. You need to learn how to make a curtain. All right. I have a board to buy. I see an Amish man coming with a bill in his hand. Bye guys.